Hello to everyone listening and welcome to RegTech Live with Clause Match. The aim of these sessions is to provide you with a 10 minute live discussion around technology and compliance, speaking with leading industry experts every Thursday lunchtime. Today, I'm pleased by, to be joined by Russell Perry, the CEO of company where we'll be talking about the power of primary source data. Russell, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and your RegTech company? Thank you, Freddie, um, for having me. My name is Russell Perry. I'm the founder and CEO of Company. Uh, Company is a regulatory technology platform, and we focus on business KYC, uh, verifying companies worldwide uh, in real time, and uh, fulfilling and helping our clients fulfill the AML obligations to having the right data, the right company information from onboarding all the way to the active monitoring of their B2B clients. Great. This is a really interesting and important area of regulatory technology. Um, given that you speak uh, a lot uh, with and service a lot of financial institutions on the first line of defense in terms of KYC, KYB, AML processes, what do you think are the current threats and challenges in this space? And have they been compounded by the current pandemic? Yeah. Well, the, you know, the, the data uh, shows that about 95% of financial institutions or regulated entities under anti-money laundering are still using manual processes and they're still relying on information of, of you know, their B2B clients and their corporates and so forth, which is a static data. And um, through the new regulation, there's not only a need to automate and really always be up to speed and, and find a way to manage all of the regulation, but obviously data matters, right? What data am I using to verify? What information and data am I using then for the risk classification? And what is uh, the information that uh, also triggers an alert? You know, one hand we have PEP and sanctions. There's some really great services out there and, and companies out there who have digitized this and automated. And when it comes uh, to the, the KYB part, so the business KYC part, there's really a big gap right now uh, in, the, in the market for, on one hand from uh, the supplier, from the service provider side, and of course uh, from uh, the users, the, the regulated entities. And under uh, the, the current pandemic, um, I mean, what we saw initially in the first two weeks, you know, here in Austria, we're headquartered here in Vienna, uh, and, and have offices in Singapore, London, and New York. Uh, what we're seeing, uh, what we first saw in the last, uh, in the first two weeks, uh, was a little bit of a slowing down, right? The slowing down on the clients, like what does this mean? There's a lot of uncertainty in the market. But very quickly, uh, the uh, COVID economic stimulus programs were uh, implemented, announced, and implemented uh, throughout the world, and. Uh, in the UK, we saw that uh, the banks were actually not ready. The lenders were not ready for the influx of requests. You know, if you're getting 30,000 new requests uh, uh, on the first day, there's a question is, how do you manage it? How do you verify? How do you actually ensure that before you uh, provide the loans that are backed by the government, how do you ensure that they're legitimate? And we did a few calculations there too. Um, to see that, you know, where would the money go? Uh, and uh, there's, in the UK alone, more than 80,000 companies that have ultimate beneficial owners that are outside of the United Kingdom, right? And, uh, and recently, we've also seen just the last week or two that the UK Treasury, the US Treasury, is expecting that there would be up to 20% of the requests for the economic stimulus support will be fraudulent. And where is this money then going to go? Is it, it might go into illicit channels, right? It might uh, actually go into the channels uh, that we're trying to prevent uh, being funded, like, you know, terrorism, et cetera, and, and money laundering generally. And uh, through the, uh, a group uh, which uh, includes uh, crowds and swoop uh, and, um, um, uh, sorry about that, shield pay, uh, and Rails Bank, uh, we created under uh, the leadership of Chris Adelsbach from Outrun Ventures, uh, a group called the uh, COVID FinTech Group to, to show that uh, the FinTech and the RegTech, specifically the RegTech uh, industry already has the services in place, oven ready services, commercially off the shelf services 
to help service the demand in the market. This, this peak, this influx all of a sudden, which was um, really triggered by the, the pandemic and the economic stimulus programs. However, uh, what we're, we're seeing is that the demand now, and I mean, we're all working from home, right? So uh, we've, seen, we've seen new tools being used uh, we, where there's more video conferencing like now, you know, this is a, a virtual. And uh, the, but there's still a big gap, right? In the adoption of technology that's available today. And it's really not just about managing uh, regulation, right? And, and make, you know, putting a digital bow around it. What it really is, is like, how can we fundamentally change the business model so the clients at the end can be serviced better, right? Faster and more efficient. No, I mean, some great insights there. And I think, um, I think the forecast is that, you know, SME lending, especially in the short term, given the current crisis, is uh, going to put a significant burden on a lot of the incumbents. And um, yeah, it's great to hear that you're creating initiatives um, uh, like the one you've just mentioned to try and facilitate a faster, more efficient and effective way of servicing clients. I understand that your business um, prides itself on utilizing primary source data to support um, institutions' due diligence on businesses. What are the key differences between using primary source data versus secondary uh, source data? Yeah, and there are two significant data sets, right? When we're talking about uh, secondary source, usually referring to information that's in a static database that has been aggregated, new profiles have been created which makes sense for a lot of applications like risk, right? Calculating the risk and really letting the models uh, really run based on a lot of data sets. But if we look at, on one hand, the regulation, the fourth or the fifth anti-money laundering regulation, data matters, right? So primary source data is really the standard now because when you're onboarding a client, a B2B client, you need to know at the time of the onboarding, what's the status? Who are the people behind it? who is the ultimate beneficial owner. And uh, the data veracity is very, very high when it comes from a primary source. Like, and the primary source can be a commercial register or like, you know, uh, it can be a financial uh, authority, it can be a tax authority. But it, it creates a lot of challenges too because all of a sudden the data that is being used is dynamic. It's on demand. It's not coming from, you know, a standardized, very you know static uh, data and centralized database. It's, it's coming from the sources themselves. So what we have uh, built here is uh, a connection to 200 commercial registers, financial authorities, and tax authorities worldwide. So it's a live network and an on-demand real-time verification of companies. And of course, the information that's available, the filings and so forth are different in every jurisdiction. You know, why would it be so simple to have you know, one standard? Um, but uh, with the mechanics and the technology in place today, what we've, we've developed, we can uh, baseline the data. We can ensure that our clients have the information they need of their new clients, existing clients for monitoring, always on demand with the timestamp, uh, from the primary source and as a true copy. And that is essential because uh, that covers the, the definition of audit proof information um, and I'm aware we're sort of we're close to you know the 10 minute mark but it's okay to obviously if we roll over a little bit but I really want to just understand what's the real competitive edge of um, using primary source data rather than you know using uh, what most financial institutions will use obviously just go into company house and uh, potentially look at data that might be out of date what is that competitive yeah. edge of using or, or by company's house of course would be primary source data as well uh, it's really about secondary sources and static databases. The competitive uh, advantage is that you're compliant because data matters and you need to know at the time where you're conducting or extending a credit line, what's the status of the company and who are the people behind it. And you need to be able to use fresh data. It doesn't help you if you know what the shareholders were six months ago. It doesn't help you if you have information that you know, ends at the, at the border. You ha it's you know, connected, uh, obviously, economy. And like I said, there's 80,000 UK companies themselves that have ultimate beneficial owners that are outside of the UK. And you need, with technology, with reg tech, with our solution, for example, you can do, you can check this in real time. Okay, great. Well, Russell, firstly, thank you so much for sharing some amazing insights. Uh, company sounds like they're doing some amazing, great things, but it's also great to understand uh, how 
primary source data can provide a competitive edge for regulated institutions. Um, this area, um, you know, I, 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 know, I knew little about, um, so I found this conversation very interesting. Thank you also to everyone who uh, listened in today. Um, please do join us again next Thursday. Cheers.